I applied for this job. My party, the All Progressive Grand Alliance Africa, shortlisted me. And you, Omun Nemunde Anambra, interviewed and employed me as your chief servant with chief do with Dr. Onye Kachuku Gilbert Ibezim as my deputy. God ordained this moment and we are grateful to him and to you all for the privilege to serve you. Dr. Ibezim and I will work very hard every day to make you proud. I ask millions of Ndia Nambra all over the world who have prayed for, this, for today to simply say a one minute prayer to commit this journey and the Anambra state onto the hands of the Almighty God. Anambra will win. Before I go further, let's pay special tributes to hundreds of thousands of our friends and supporters who work tirelessly to see us to this moment. It is not possible to list all of you here. I remember with deep sense of grief the three gallant police officers, Inspector Murutala Saudi, Sergeant Modashir Ahmed, and Sergeant Samuel Ishaya, who lost their lives to the unknown gunmen who attacked us at a meeting with the youth in my village last year. We pledge to continue to take care of their families. Let me particularly thank my friend and outgoing governor of Anambra State, His Excellency Sir William Madabrochuko Obiano, for being an honorable gentleman and leader. On Saturday, 20th November 2016, I accepted your proposal for gentlemen's understanding and partnership. I kept my part in 2017, and even after, after five years, you still kept yours in 2021. I always emphasize this point because it is rare these days to find people who keep their word in politics, and we will never take your support for granted. You are indeed a great leader. Thanks for believing in me. We will work hard to make you and India Nambra proud. To our indefatigable national chairman, Osambu Dr. Victor Ikoye, your, Victor, your visit of 27th August 2016 and unwavering support remain historical. I will continue to thank all our party members, especially the members of the Board of Trustees, National Executive Council, State, Local Government, and Ward Excos, our campaign committees at all levels for their massive support. I am grateful to all the stakeholders of the Anambra project, the clergy, and I see several of our leaders in the Lord who are here, from the archbishops to the bishops, and so on and the church, traditional rulers, association of Anambra Town Unions, labor, market, trade, and professional unions, youth and women organizations, non-indigenous associations, businessmen and captains of industry, the diaspora community, persons with disabilities, etc., etc. We thank you especially the 41 self-funding support groups who propel this movement. Our donors and, and the goodwill of other Nigerian stakeholders made a significant difference. Thanks immensely to the 150 star studded transition committee chaired by our own Dr. Mrs. Obie Zekwesele. Let me once again put on record our debt of gratitude to the federal institutions, the Judiciary, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the security agencies, for insisting on a transparent and credible electoral system. Our eternal gratitude goes to President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, and the presidency for remaining Democrats. In particular, I want to thank my wife, <laughs> um, that's the one that makes me glow, Nonye Francis Soludo, and my children, Ozonna, Ifa, Tuchinoa, Ekene, Odoka, and Zikora for their love and sacrifices. Despite your deep reservations about this journey, you still allowed and supported me to step out in the service of our people. As I repeatedly promised, I will work hard every day never to disappoint you. My 90-year-old father is watching this life while my late beloved mother, Mbafo, is smiling in her grave. Today is my first day at work. I just reported for duty 
855 to be precise, and we'll walk for at least eight hours today. And that's why I'm just eager to get this over with so we can go in and start work. We had more than a month since the election to celebrate our historic victory. Now is the time to work, and there is no minute or cobble to waste in form fair. In a few minutes, I will announce some of the principal officers of my administration and commence with serious meetings of the Anambra Security Council, followed by a meeting with the Permanent Secretaries, a meeting on Oboko, and with my strategy, execution, and evaluation team. Within the next, within the next one week, the list of commissioners will be led before the House of Assembly. Tomorrow, we will head to Oboko, in our local government area, and pass our furniture and indemnity as we signpost our commitment to fundamental urban, urban regeneration, beginning with the greater Onesha metropolis. As I stand here, ladies and gentlemen, I feel the weight of history. I stand on the foundation laid especially by our elected predecessors, Honorable Wright Dr. Nambi Azikiwe, GCFR, Dr. Michael Opara, Chief Jingwo Godo, Chief Christian Ono, Dr. Chukwe Meke Zife, Dr. Chingwo Kempad Nojo, Chris Ngige, Mr. Peter Obi, and yes, our own Chief Sir Willie Obiano. You all, lay, you all did your best and well for our people, and I salute you all. As I wear the Afghan muffler on my neck, I feel the weight of Africa's historic progressives, like the great Zeke of Africa, Chief Obafemi Awolowa GCFR, Mualimu Julius Nyerere, Dr. Emma Ayopara, Malama Aminu Kano, Chief Joseph Taka, Malam Balarabe Musa, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, etc. Not to talk of millions of the living African progressives who still dream of renaissance Africa. We will never let them down. The All Progressive Grand Alliance, our party, initially set up uh, to be registered as United Progressive Grand Alliance OPGA is a nostalgic rebirth of the Grand Alliance of Progressives in the First Republic, comprising the Aziki West NCNC, Awolowas Action Group, Joseph Takas, United Middle Belt Congress, Amino Kano's NAPO, ATC. As the first true progressive party in Nigeria since 1999, at least it is the first to be registered as a progressive party. Our ideology is a combination of Zeke's neo welfareism, a world of scientific socialism, and Amino Kano's democratic humanism to form what we see as the Pan African market progressivism. It is a Pan Africanist ideology that integrates the social democratic values with the principles of competitive markets. Anambra, under our watch, will mirror this ideology and we believe that this should be Nigeria's compass to the future. We will seek active collaboration and cooperation with the federal government, our neighboring and other states, as well as the international community, to provide our state truly God people centered governance. We will consolidate the progress made by our under our predecessors to continue Anambra's upward trajectory. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I stand up for the millions of Undi Anambra for whom this mandate means everything. The hopes and expectations rise up to the heavens. Understandably, all of us wish that I could perform miracles by waving my hands and our problems will be solved. I hear you. I feel your pause. For your sake, I keep awake at night, sometimes having palpitations about not letting you down. Well, since God is a miracle worker, I will look out to him in prayer and faith as we start the work ahead of us. I see and feel all the humongous challenges. I know the lean financial base of our state. I know the limitations imposed upon a sub-national state, such as Anambra, by the peculiar structure of our federation. But ladies and gentlemen, here is my promise. I will give it my all. I will work hard very hard every day with you to make Anambra proud. Every cover of your tax money will be deployed to provide you maximum value. People ask me why we are not celebrating today as it has become customary. My response is that we all, party members, supporters, family and friends, 
celebrated in thanksgiving and prayers after you decided to employ me last December, uh, last November 6 and 9. But today, my first day at work, is not a day for celebration. First, there is no venue that can contain the tens of thousands of Ndiyanambra and friends all over the world who would wish to join us on this historic occasion. Second, the state cannot afford any such expensive ceremonies. Third, and as a matter of personal philosophy, and as a true progressive, I do not subscribe to using pow the poultry tax collected from the women selling pepper on the roadside or the Okada or Keke drivers on a fleeting form fair and banquet. I insisted, I insisted that this event must not cost the government of Anambra one kobo, and it has not. Even the little refreshment that we have here, the canopies as well, they are all paid personally. It will not cost our number of one couple to do this. I would rather use such resources, if it's available, to lay the foundation stone for a public hospital at Okoko or elsewhere, or empower our security agencies to fight criminality. Today, I come with a sober heart, conscious of the enormity of responsibilities on our shoulders and the challenges ahead. Yes, there will be time to celebrate. We will celebrate when security of life and property is guaranteed and law and order is restored. When every child of schooling age is in school, when every school child is receiving the 21st century education for the digital age. We will celebrate when everyone, especially children and women, can access quality health care, where the cost of doing business is down to near zero. Our roads are tired and we have an efficient transportation system with no one having to wait in traffic for more than a few minutes. Until we have access to 24-hour electricity and our streets are clean and green, our cities, communities and markets are planned and clean, the many millions of Chalimwamba force and the vulnerable persons are lifted up to realize their God-given potential. And all our pensioners receive their gratuities and workers are paid their leave allowances and contractors paid, we will not celebrate. Until our youths get jobs and business opportunities, until the youth in Okoko Zone 9 become global serial entrepreneurs, we will not celebrate. Poverty, until poverty is near zero and the income levels rising. Yes, I will not celebrate and certainly not with the taxpayers' money. I come to this job prepared to serve you. For 12 years since 2009 when I first indicated interest to serve you, I persevered through the turbulent politics and here we are today. Once again, I present to you the Soludo Solution, where I contract with the people which we intend to vigorously implement subject to resource availability. Our contract with Anambra people derived from three seminal documents. The Anambra Vision 2070, a 50-year development plan which I chaired the drafter. B, the Soludo Solution, a People's Manifesto for a Greater Anambra. And the third is the Transition Combined, the Transition Committee's Combined Report, which built on the first two documents. In sum, ladies and gentlemen on the by, this is an agenda for an itinerant tribe in search of a livable and prosperous homeland. Driven by the philosophy of one Anambra, one people, one agenda, our goal is to build Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city. Yes, we are starting, as I said, tomorrow at Opoko. Somebody asked me from the south, asked me that the outgoing governor is from the north and it's just handing over to someone from the south and you're also beginning your first job uh, from the north. And I said, my response was, I believe in one Anambra, one people, one agenda. Yes. And our agenda, that one goal is to build Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city. We aim to transit beyond petroleum to the digital world of the fourth industrial revolution and envision Anambra as an industrial technology and leisure entertainment hub of West Africa. Our detailed plan rests on five key pillars. The first is law and order, and that is homeland peace and security. The second, economic transformation as Nigeria's next axis of industrial tech and leisure. And fourth is 
competitive and progressive social agenda to deal with education, health, youth, women and vulnerable groups, and then governance, rule of law, and the rebirth of our value system. And finally, to aggressively tackling our existential threat posed by the environment. And that's towards moving towards a clean, green, planned and sustainable cities, communities and markets. For me, ladies and gentlemen, this agenda is also personal. I am here to join you in building a society where I will be proud to live in after leaving office. Ndebai, what we propose is what we collectively build, is that we collectively build a new social and economic order that guarantees and defends economic freedom and reward of private enterprise to secure our future that any child born in Anambra will have little incentive to rush elsewhere in search of opportunities and anyone persecuted anywhere in the world can return to a happy and prosperous homeland. That is our mission. Such a new order will of necessity entail a massive disruptive change and creative destruction with short-term pains but guaranteed long-term benefits. As a humane and progressive government, we shall strive to deliver the difficult change with a human face. As we transit into a non-oil economy, our strategy is a small open economy framework embedded in the 21st century imperative of everything technology. We seek to bring the world to Anambra and take Anambra to the world, especially in the context of the African continental free trade uh, made in Anambra and Anambra standards agenda underpin this strategy. If you can produce it in Anambra, I will be your chief marketing officer, mm. provided that your standards meet the Anambra standard, which is excellence. The Anambra government will only patronize made in Anambra products and services unless such goods or services are not currently made in Anambra, then made in Nigeria, Africa, and in that sequence. When you see me in a nursing vehicles or in my equated dress with a pair of shoes made in Obunike and in Kuali Zunaka, that's my shoe from there, and on Asia, we are making a statement. And if you look there, you will see, as I promised, that the vehicle I will drive will be in nursing and coming up and they're already, that's it, right there. Today, the light refreshment to be served after this brief event is our batcha from Umunze. Uwa <laughs> <laughs> from Ethiopia. Anambra rice with Ofapu. Nkwenu from Obu. Nkwo from Awa and Oba. And bottled and bottled water from Onisha. Oh, you go there. Welcome. As part of our Made in Anambra <laughs> cultural renaissance and healthy living agenda, when you come to the governor's lodge or attend any state government function, be sure to be served only Made in Anambra. We want to go back to where M.I. Obara stopped with the Palm Revolution and plant millions of palm trees. In some years, we will seek not only to export palm produce, but also fresh palm wine from Anambra State. We will seek active collaboration with the federal government, not only to export manufactured and agricultural products, but also services, especially tech, leisure, entertainment, and skills and talents, as we seek an edu educational system whose products are productive at home and also exportable abroad. Anambra's greatest resource is our human capital, and we shall grow and mine this resource to its maximum leveraging on technology. We will soon inaugurate the Anambra Innovation and Technology Advisory Council to drive the emergence of the digital tribe and mainstreaming technology and innovation across all aspects of our life. Also, our International Investment Council, our Global Friends of Anambra in Development, as well as the Council on the Ease of Doing Business. We will conduct local government elections. Confirm, confirm, confirm. That's the most. No doubt the uniform local government system as the third federating unit is one of the contested features of our federalism. But we must make the best of a bad system by unleashing the potential of governance at the lower levels. 
Over the next two years, we shall review, amend the relevant legislation, reform and strengthen the system for efficiency, restructure and strengthen the Anambra's Independent Electoral Commission, and conduct local government elections. We will collaborate and coordinate actively with local governments to ensure synergy and complementarities. Let the revolution also get to the grassroots. We shall reinvigorate and mainstream the public community private partnership as a veritable framework for service delivery and development. We will develop pragmatic frameworks for private sector and communities to adopt schools, build roads through infrastructure, manage government assets, receive and manage development matching grants, participate in sanitation and securing law and order. There is a subtle but powerful revolution underway or raising the bar on our age-old community development model. Yes, every community impacts on community development. And there are thousands of Ndea Nambra operating different private charities and philanthropies. But let me give you an example that beyond the well-known Newe model about think home and act home. Some communities such as Neni and Adaziane, just showing these two as an example, I'm showing new examples. At Neni, an individual has started 18 kilometers of road. And together with others, now a total of 24 kilometers of road provided by private citizens of Neni in wow. Neni. And they are now refurbishing and empowering public schools in their community. An individual in Adaziane has also done 13 kilometers and wants to surpass the Neni record. The government will provide a framework to incentivize and unleash the momentum of this new phenomenon at the village and community levels. Our government is committed to promoting the expedi expeditious dispensation of justice, especially the prompt resolution of commercial disputes. We shall collaborate with the chief judge and his colleagues to significantly improve the physical infrastructure and technological infrastructure of the courts and hopefully also implement some structural reforms to fast track the path to justice and make Anambra the number one in the speedy dispensation of justice and ease of doing business. Ndeba in the Anambra, part of our future is the part of our future is in our past. We will mainstream our values of hard work, integrity, compassion, and sanctity of life. The fringe but destructive minority, which embodies the get rich quick by all means philosophy cultism, drug addiction, bloodletting, criminality, kidnapping, etc. They do not represent us and cannot define us. As a new social order and everything technology, philosophy, take life, many unproductive systems will give way. There will be new and better ways of managing our parks, managing our markets, different and better ways of collecting government revenue, managing waste, and general service delivery to citizens. The land registry will be digitized, and we shall leverage on technology to ensure a responsive and accountable public service, together with our initiative for ID, an ID for every Anambra person, wherever he or she may be, and a code of conduct for political appointees to mainstream servant leadership by example. We must, ladies and gentlemen, read our nature, and all our roads and markets of revenue towns and make shopping in Anambra a pleasurable experience. Hallelujah. Today, I will sign an executive order to suspend all revenue contracts operating in the parks, markets, and roads until we put in place a new system within the next four weeks. Hallelujah. Consequently, as from tomorrow, the 18th March 2022, if anyone asks you to pay him or her cash as revenue to the government in the parks, markets and roads, such a person must be a thief. And market unions must also stop harassing the customers. We shall embark on massive training and social re-engineering to win our people off the old unproductive ways. As a humane government, we shall endeavor to offer alternative opportunities to the revenue towns. Over the next two years, many will complain that, quote, it is not the way we do it. But we can repeat the same thing and expect a different result. During the coming months, we shall embark on, we shall embark upon bold but difficult reforms 
and these reforms may be unpopular, especially among those benefiting from the existing order. For sure, the revenue and pack mafia that are raking billions of government revenue into their private pockets won't be happy. But we commit to doing the right things, and we plead for your understanding, patience, and cooperation. By His grace, thereby Anambra will win. But Anambra State is a subnational entity within the context of Nigeria's unitary federalism. The speed of our progress will depend in part upon the threats and opportunities inherent in such a system. The ongoing constitutional amendment at the National Assembly is welcome, albeit that some of the proposals merely tinker at the margins and are attempting to do more of the same. The subnational states need to be unleashed. For too long, Nigeria has tried a top-down strategy. Now is the time to try a bottom-up approach, and that's part of my motivation. While we debate how far and how far the devolution and reconfigurations will go, the world is not waiting. As the world transits away from oil into cleaner energy sources and the world of fourth industrial level revolution, Nigeria needs a fundamentally different role book to survive and to compete. We will seek to optimize the limited headroom allowed by the current peculiar structure to give our people improved lifestyle. Besides the environment, a fundamental existential threat to our state and indeed Igbo land is that of peace building and law and order. We can't build this homeland by turning the sword against each other. Ndi Anambra love their homeland, but the recent upsurge in criminality poses a great threat. My heart bleeds to see and hear about our youth dying in senseless circumstances. Every criminal gang today, kidnappers, wicked murderers, arsonists, rapists, thieves, all now claim to be freedom fighters. Criminality cannot be sugar-coated. This must stop. All the stakeholders must now review both the narrative and the action plan. For starters, I totally endorse the recent statement of March 7th this year by the Joint Body of Southeast Council of Traditional Rulers and Bishops and Archbishops on the Peace and Conflict Resolution, requesting for a tripartite discussion between them, the Presidency, and the Southeast Governors to deal with the conflicts in the Southeast, especially in relation to Nam Dekano and Indigenous People of Biafra Ipo and the Eastern Security Network. There is no conflict that dialogue in good faith cannot resolve. Our government is determined to urgently restore peace and security in Anambra, and we will seek active collaboration and cooperation of all stakeholders. To the IPOB, ESN, and MASO, as well as the disparate armed groups in the forest, it is time to interrogate both the purpose and the means of your campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, to the politicians playing politics with insecurity, you are riding a tiger. The current trajectory is a road to desolation. Let us get around the table and talk. Let the elite in the closet come out and let the debate, let's debate our future and forge a consensus. The conspiracy of silence by the elite and some of the community leaders must end. If you see something, say something, or do something. Securing Igbo land and Nigeria must be our collective responsibility. Let those in the forest come out, surrender your guns, and let's work together to rehabilitate and empower you to contribute positively to peace and prosperity of our homeland. A significant part of our state economy is powered by artisans, Keke drivers, volcanizers, hairdressers, cat pushers, petit traders, bricklayers, women frying akara, and all those who depend on daily toil and sweat to feed their families. Every day there is a seat at home, these poor masses lose an estimated 19.6 billion in terms of lost income in Anambra State alone. Due to the protracted breakdown of law and order, businesses are relocating 
outside the Ebola and there is growing unemployment and traders who used to come to shopping on it, ABA, etc. are going elsewhere. Who is losing? By forcing our children, the future of Ebola, to stay at home instead of being in school, while even the critically sick people, including pregnant women, cannot go to hospital on the days you declare sit at home, we are harming our future. I hereby challenge any of the disparate groups that claim that it is not part of the senseless cleans and kidnappings to step out and show leadership by joining hands with us to do something about it. If you love our homeland, there is no place for bloodshed. Our Lord Jesus Christ admonished us in Matthew 26, verse 52, quote, put your sword back in its shed, sheet, for all who live by the sword will die by the sword. In the traditional religion, the land places a curse upon those who spill the blood of the innocent. For me, ladies and gentlemen on the by, this issue is very personal to me and a very emotional one. My mother and wife died during the Civil War. Her last born, Chukwe Mecca, died the same during the war. My father bore a bullet inside of him for many years. My